finding lengths, areas and volumes. Now this video is meant as a revision tool and not as a teaching guide. And I'm just going to quickly go through mainly how to find volumes um, because the ones I'm going to do with prisms have areas on the on the front sides of them anyway so that will recap the areas as well. So to start off with we have a cuboid standard um, box type shape and the idea here is if you pick any corner of the cuboid and work out the sides that are coming off it so that side is 2, that side is 3, that side is 8. If we just multiply those together, 2 times 3 times 8, that would give us our volume. And that's going to be 6 times 8 is 48 centimeters cubed. Because the volumes must be cubic units. Now these three shapes here are what we call prisms because they have one shape that is the same all the way through the shape. So if I sliced it anywhere along its length, I would have that same shape again. Now that's technically, technically called the uh, cross-section of the shape. So we work out the area of the cross-section first. So we've got a triangle here. And for a triangle, we do a half of the base times the height. So we do the base times the height, 6 eighths of 48, and we do a half of that, so half times 6 times 8, it's going to be 24. So the area of that triangle is 24 centimetres squared. Now sometimes you might be given the area to start with, so you might be told that's 24, and then you just have to multiply by the depth of the shape. This 10 is not important, it has nothing to do with this question, and it's sometimes they put numbers in to make it more complicated, sometimes they don't, they just, sometimes they just put the numbers you need. So we've got the 24 as the area of the front. To get the volume, we need to times that by the 12, the depth of the shape. So if we stood it up on this end, it would be 12 high. So we've got 24 times by 12. Let's bring the calculator for that. So that's 200. Hmm, pen's not working very well. 288 centimeters cubed for the volume. Okay, now we've got one that's a parallelogram. This shape here on the front here is a parallelogram. Um, it's not actually obvious though, but uh, it should have arrows on the sides like this to show that it's parallel. Okay, and this yellow bit's on the front. So to find the area of the parallelogram, we do the base times the height. So we do base. I'm gonna need to slow down. Base times the height. So the base is 10 and the height is 4, so the area of that parallelogram on the front is 40 centimetres squared. And then we times it by the 4.5, not by the 5, that's just this length here which is not important. So we've got 40 times by 4.5 and that's going to give us, well, 440 is 160 and half of 40 is 20, so 180 centimetres cubed. And then we've got a trapezium, probably the trick, one of the trickiest uh, two-dimensional areas we need to, to know. And we're often, or we're usually given this formula for it anyway. So I'll put that in the corner there. So we have the two parallel sides, A and B. And uh, we need to add those two together first. So this length here is 2, because it's the same as this one here. So our two parallel sides are 2 plus 5, which is 7. And then we need to times that by the height, which we're given as 4, so that's 28. And then we have to halve it, so we half all of that, and half of 28 is 14. So we've got a half of 7 times by 4, which is 14. So that's the area of the front shape, the trapezium on the front. And then we've got to times by the 7, so we do 14 times 7, 7 falls 28 plus 70 is 98 centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's have a look at some cylinders. Okay, now technically cylinders are not prisms, but they work in exactly the same way. You work out the area of the end and times by the height. So for a cylinder, this is a circle. We usually either given the radius or the diameter. 
And the formula we want for, to work out the area of the circle is pi times the radius squared, or pi times r times r. So in this question, the yellow end is going to be pi, which is approximately 3.14. Well, you can use the calculator in a second. Times by 3 times by 3, or 3 squared. So there's the pi button there on the calculator. You need to use the shift key usually to get to it times by the radius which is 3, I can either type in 3 squared or 3 times 3 and that's 9 pi because 3 times 3 is 9 um, if I wanted a decimal it would be that value there and then I need to times by the height so that's the area of the end and that's in centimeters squared so we've got 9 pi times by 2 so exactly that would be 2 9 to 18 pi you can leave your answer as that and that would be a volume, but if we wanted it as a decimal to set a certain number of decimal places, say one decimal place, that would be 56.5 centimeters cubed. Okay, a slightly trickier one because we've given the um, diameter. So to start with, if the diameter is 10, then we need to realize that the radius is half of that, which is five, and then we continue in the same way as we did before. So we've got pi, times 5 squared which is 25 pi and then we're going to times by this 11.5 which is the height so we've got 25 pi times by 11.5 which is that value there or 903.2 centimeters cubed Okay, a slight variation on this is we could be given the volume to start with and we've got one of the sides is missing. So we work out the area of the two sides we've got there and then we divide the volume by that. So in this um, cuboid, if we work out the area of the base is six times four, oops, six times four, not 64. So we've got six times four and then we times by the x to get the volume, which is 96. So we've got 24, 6 times 4 times x equals 96. So x equals 96 divided by 24, which gives us, I'm guessing 4, let's just check. Yeah, 4. Okay, so if you want to reverse a question, you're given the final answer and you've just got to find a missing number, you'll have to do some sort of division in the question. Okay, so that's finding lengths, areas and volumes.